at 1 megahertz, the skin depth is just 82 micrometers. And at 300 megahertz, the skin depth is just 5 micrometers. So the EMP is really not going to be able to penetrate the outer skin of the airplane, which is 3 millimeters thick. Let's draw a sketch of what the electric field amplitude looks like versus depth into the aluminum. Consider a sinusoidal plane wave, and we'll look specifically at 1 megahertz. Now, normally, we might be tempted to just draw a sinusoid with a de decaying amplitude. So here, if we consider z, z equals 0 as our starting point, then we, it might be tempting to draw something like this, where the amplitude decays exponentially. Um, but to be more accurate, we should compare how quickly the wave is attenuating relative to the wavelength of the electronetic wave in the metal. The wavelength in the aluminum is 2 pi over beta. And we already calculated beta to be, at 1 megahertz, uh, 12,200. So at 1 megahertz, the wavelength is 515 micrometers. This means that the wavelength of the EMP at 1 megahertz in air would be 300 meters, but in the aluminum, the wavelength has reduced to just 515 micrometers. That's another characteristic of a conductor, is that it greatly shrinks the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave. And since we calculated the skin depth at 1 megahertz to be 82 micrometers, this means the skin depth is less than the wavelength. Here is a plot of the electric field, let's say it's e electric field, versus depth into the aluminum at about 1 megahertz. You can see our sinusoidal wave is reduced to just a fraction of a wavelength. That's why you don't see those a full any a full wavelength here. Uh, and with the amplitude, and it decays exponentially into the material. So we see less than one wavelength. These are three different snapshots in time. Um, omega t is equal to zero, pi over four, and pi over two. So over time, this would be oscillating uh, uh, up and down between the two dotted lines. Since we just determined that the wavelength is greatly reduced than the aluminum, let's consider the speed of the wave. Since up is equal to lambda f, and we just determined that lambda is greatly reduced in the good conductor. So lambda here is 515 micrometers, and as f is 1 megahertz, then we get a phase velocity of just 515 meters per second. And this is much, much slower than the speed of light in air. If we were to repeat this for 300 megahertz, the wave of the speed, <laughs> the speed of the wave would be increased to 9,000 meters per second. So this is at 300 megahertz. So that's another characteristic of a good conductor. The wavelength shrinks and the speed of the wave greatly reduces. The last thing we should consider is the intrinsic impedance of the aluminum. When we have a lossy material, like aluminum, the ratio of the electric field to the magnetic field, which is the intrinsic impedance of the material, also becomes complex, as shown here. So here's the variable we're using for this. It's uh, equivalent to Z0, which we had for transmission lines. And squared of mu over epsilon. And epsilon is complex now, so we're going to write that out. And once we uh, simplify it, as you would normally see it written like this in like table 7-1. So this is a complex value. That means our, characters, our intrinsic impedance of the material is complex. What does it mean to have a complex impedance for our material?